This is Joe Todd, November 13th, 1982, interview with Every Easley. Mr. Easley, where were you born? What state? Kentucky. Kentucky. When's your birthday? 23rd day of December. What year? 79, 1879 when I was born. Okay. Uh, were you born on a farm? How was that? Were you born on a farm? Uh, what part of Kentucky were you born in? Selby County. Selby County. How long did you live in Kentucky? Almost two years. <laughs> I can't remember when the last time, but I can remember when I got on the road going to Missouri. That's funny. And two, three weeks from the time I left that, I can remember pretty good. But right then again. So from Kentucky, you went to Missouri? To Missouri. To Vernon, the first, to Bates County. From Bates County back through Vernon to Barton County. Lamar, the Tennessee. Two years each one of those places, then back into Vernon County, that's the very busy county seat. Stayed there five years and then took out the territory. I was 17 years old when I come down here. Okay, what? Uh, uh, so you spent 15 years in Missouri? Huh? So you spent about 15 years in Missouri? That's right. Okay. About 15 years. Two in Kentucky, I would say. Not quite, but almost. This uh, five in Missouri, and I guess eighty five down here, right? Eighty five, five ninety, seven hundred, eighty three here, I guess. Uh, were you a farmer in Missouri? Huh? Farmer? Did you farm in Missouri? Yes, my mother was a farmer. I was the only child, and. Uh, I just wouldn't look at me and they didn't want him on them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, he was a farmer always. A carpenter, that is, uh, when he had spare time. He just a one horse farmer, so he was just, till I got big enough to run a team. Uh, that's about 12, 14 years old. He got a team, then we run two teams. But before that, he just run one. Uh, where did you go to school? They never counted, <laughs> but the uh, first run is in Barton County. I first started. I think they put one season there. They come up in Vernon County. They never did go to Beach County. I was old enough. Oh. This is a little country school, just one of them. My dad was a small farmer, just a one horse farmer, and he might have to just take whatever he could get. And he had to move every year. What was your father's name? His full name? Shoot, that's for me. Woodson, David Double O D S O N. Woodson. And easily as. He used that it a little, uh, that'd be uneasy. It was just the name he used all the time. Mm -hmm. What was your mother's name, her maiden name? Uh, Hedges. Hodges? Hedges, H-E-D-G-E-S. Where was your father from? Huh? Where was your father from? He is in Kentucky. <laughs> what about your mother? Huh? Your mother? Both of them are Kentucky? Raised, uh, that's where they met up in my, uh, both living in that. Community there, when her father, he, had, he just had 12 children. <laughs> when my mom and my left side, when dad and the other son in law took right in after him, he was going to go to southwest Texas. But too long a trip, he stopped Missouri. <laughs> he stayed there. Mm -hmm. And uh, every time he moved, we'd take that right after him, move too. Because we did that, not the oldest there. Yeah. One year, farmers. What was the I, name of the town you were born in? 
Huh? What was the name of the town you were I born in? Town. I was in the 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 town. Did you come to Harrisonville? Harrisonville. Harrisonville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. They say, all right, so I'm the other boy. Did you complete high school? Oh, no. How far did you go? Just through the eighth grade. Through the eighth grade. Went through it five or six times. <laughs> what was the name of the... Huh? What was the name of the school that you went to? Well, I went to about a different one every year. <laughs> Was this mainly in Missouri? Huh? Mainly in Missouri? Oh, really in Missouri. I never went anywhere else. When they come down here, my father says, we go on a second TV, we'll be close to Stillwater. And that's pretty good story for an eighth grader. And uh, they went over to, I think, five years that went over them same books. And then... Uh, but when we got down here, he hadn't here very long, so uh, he, he uh, took a, well, uh, consumption, what it really was, what it turned into be, lung trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, I couldn't leave him. I, he couldn't, after he worked, I think one year, he was able to stay on his feet, then he had to give it up. Mm -hmm. And I had to stay at home. And of course, I was 17 years old. And uh, when I come down there, and uh, like all boys didn't really know what was good for me, I was glad they couldn't go to school. <laughs> uh, what kind of crops did you raise in Missouri? This uh, corn and oats. That's about all. Uh, I can't remember where it is. We always had that. Dad always had 15, 20 years old. Horse feed and raise them. Never had very many cows, four or five at a time. Cows. Set off the calves after you get any size. Depended on the milk. Mother makes butter, I thought. And uh, take it to town. And, Trade it for groceries. That's the way we lived. And everybody, even poor folks, I guess, all lived that way, you know. They took them all the time like a living. Uh, I was just reading today in the paper where Oklahoma's farmers, the government, you saw that piece, where the youngest, each family made $12. Mm -hmm. I, I read that. Some town here, we get the books to it. Beat them a little bit. They made thirty some dollars. <laughs> mm -hmm. What a life. Mr. Easley, what place in Missouri did you live the longest? What state? No, what place in Missouri? Oh, well, in Vernon County. Nevada is the county seat. We were about 18, 20 miles from there. We just moved around the neighborhood on each side. Little town of Fair Haven. About 200 people, something like that. Uh, we lived all, well, uh, wound up the last year we were there, living in it. Mm -hmm. Dad bought a five acres of land and joined it. A uh, five one acre lot. They'd been going, the old man Conway that owned, he had a full, a full quarter. Across the road where the big town he had an 80. And uh, he had that about putting all of his state all in town lots, acre lots, most of it. Dad bought five of them acre lots. And uh, we lived there four or five years, I guess, of our town. And when we sold them, we farmed, ran right a farm. I was big enough. It, uh, old enough that we could run two teams all the time and so it enlarged a little. And that's granddad of mine, my mother's father, he comes to Oklahoma and dad 
Look out after him, come fall knee down, he'll call me. Tell you a story, brother. Mm -hmm. And they, they come in 84, 85, and we come in spring 87. 97, I mean. They come in 95, not 85. They strip, they opened up in 1893, September. And that's where we landed there. Was your father in the Civil War? No, he wasn't old enough. He had six brothers in it. Seven, the, quite a contrast. Sixteen in his family, nine girls and seven boys. He was the only one who was old enough to go to war. The others went to war. Two of them was killed. Mm -hmm. Two of them was crippled up. Both of them never went to the I didn't get all right. It was all in the Union Army. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the way it went. Mm -hmm. um, uh, when you first came to Payne County, what kind of house did you live in? How was that? What kind of house did you live in when you first came, came to Payne County? Payne County? Yeah, that's where you came? In 1897? You came to Stillwater? Um, uh, no, I didn't come to Stillwater. Oh. I came to Pawnee County. Pawnee. Pawnee is the county seat. And, uh, well, I tell you who's kind of a woman was. My mother had three brothers that come down here in the race and each got a twin. This one and his wife come down here as John, as his next friend. He took his typhoid fever, that sort of drinking down and everything. He did a little well, all oh, like I had a little more money than the other two did. And he spent it all, but uh, he died of typhoid fever in September. And uh, she had a brother, her brother, that uh, had a far right there to join him. And she stayed with him, and she did not home on the farm and run it out to somebody, but she stayed on enough to hold it down, you know, you had to do you know, so what. And when we come, when she come and stayed with us and run the place to us, we stayed with Dad, you hear them? Dad bought a fellow down there, one of the letters, six, seven miles southwest of there, and then that fall, we moved here. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of house was it, you say? Was it? It was just a little old box up one room. Was it a sod house or frame house? A uh, frame house. Frame house. Was it near Pawnee? Six miles east. Six miles east. Yeah. Do you remember the Spanish American War? Oh, God, yes. I go, who was wanting to go? I was 18 years old then, that time. Did you go? No, oh, I didn't go. Then says, Mother says, you want to go off and leave your dad laying here in the bed and you go to war, you don't have to. That is an excuse. They ain't going to compel you to go. Of course, I didn't, I didn't know anything about it. I think I thought that would be a great thing. Mm -hmm. What do you remember? What was your feeling of the Spanish-American War? Huh? What was your feeling of the Spanish-American War? Well, uh, I don't know uh, what my feeling would be. I was going to America and whatever uh, was best for us. That's, they thought it was best for them. I was for them, you know. We had about four wars here in the first 20 years, didn't we? Mm -hmm. uh, that. And I get big steps and so get, get weak minded now and can't think back. I didn't care. Well, about how there was one of them. War one and two, then we had a spell, and then we, we always had to, the last two, anyway, we had to go overseas. Yeah, the last two, that's, huh? what, World War One, World War Two? Uh, the 
there's four and three and four is the ones I spoke of. No, I had I think maybe four, one, and then two. I, I can't remember what caused them right now. I guess what was it was mm -hmm. about. Um, were you, was your family farmers in Pawnee? Oh, yes. I never done nothing but farm. Nothing what did you raise there. around Pawnee? In Pawnee, we raised anything. You always had to have some cotton to get money out of the cotton. And that uh, other was feed to feed out some hogs and feed our cows. We just kept milk cows and we milked four or five cows. That's about as much as we were milked at that time. And uh, from the sour and the butter, and, I mean, made what butter could I would have it take it down through it for grocery. Get about ten cents a pound for that butter. Mm -hmm. Did you? You didn't go to school anymore then. They didn't get to go to school anymore. Tell you what I done, and I don't think how the fool it was though. So. Well, we come into the country uh, to bail hay. I, I don't know where you come from, but no foot feed like the hay press. And he's looking for help, and he offered me pitch a cents, of, no, ten cents a bale to pitch the hay. He's going to feed it, he's going to hire no bachelor, I mean, and Newton, Newton, yeah, that's his name, that lives there by us. He'd tie the wire, and uh, it was just bail from noon on. He boy. He had two boys. One was fourteen. The other, one, I think, was maybe sixteen. I guess they were two years. I mean, the older one was about to be as I was. I was a little older, but he probably husker now. Was. And uh, he'd bail in the evening. The fellows around there was going into bail, and for then he'd cut down hay and everything. Take it to the market. Pay me a pitch, uh, ten cents a ton, and the pitch it. <laughs> now you can get a little pitch of work for it, or not. <laughs> to regress just a little bit, huh? to go back just a minute, All right. Uh, what was your first reaction when you heard the battleship Maine had been blown up? What is what? When the battleship Maine was oh, blown yeah. up in Havana, what was your first reaction? I don't know. I thought that we were scared. That's the truth about it. I didn't know what was going to happen to us. Mm -hmm. well, of course, it didn't last long. Everybody said, we can take care of them. Did... Um, you knew that Roosevelt came down to the territory. Huh? You know that Teddy Roosevelt came here to get the Rough Riders. Yeah. You ever think of joining up with him? No, I never did see Teddy. He was in our town and around there, and a lot of the boys signed up with him, but, uh... So he came to Pawnee. Huh? He came to Pawnee. Yeah. He, uh... He's a wonderful man. I'm a Democrat. My folks were with us. Hold on a second. Um, when McKinley was assassinated. Huh? You remember when McKinley was assassinated? Yeah, I was just trying to think. 1901. 1901. Okay. And then Teddy became president. Huh? And then Teddy became president. Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, he became, he was the vice president, yep. and then he, yes, I remember that, and then he was Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, um, hard to my old head to go by 80 odd years. <laughs> I guess it was very good, it was two of us. Nineteen one was in this when he was here, and this is nineteen two, one years. Um, how come your folks came to the territory? <laughs> My granddad come. <laughs> I guess that was, wherever he went, he looked behind him, 
Seen that is coming. What was your grandfather's name? Edges. Let, let me Edges. That was your mother's father. Yeah, yeah. my mother's father. Where was he from? Kentucky. They all originated in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. His people, I think, was, was uh, his ancestor. I mean, his, his father and mother had come from up in Canada. I don't know just where they got out of England or wherever they originated over there. I hear you tell about it. <coughs> but the three brothers up north over there, and one of them married and stayed. That was his, just as his father. There they run back to Kentucky, there the two. Mm -hmm. Um... So he lived to be 95 years yeah. old in one month, and grandmother lived to be 94 years old most of the day. Mm -hmm. Raised 12 children, I got... <laughs> when did you meet your wife? When? Well, about a year before we got married, I guess. It was born in 1910. I got according to her, I think, about 1909, they moved... From up in Kansas or somewhere, a family of them, several boys and several, three girls. And uh, all the girls, the other two girls married before her, she and I did. Mm -hmm. What was your wife's name? Hicks, her surname. Anna Hicks. Mm -hmm. Anna How May. How many kids did you have? Us? Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Two boys and two girls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I used to tell her that her father and mother had 12 children. My grandfather, I tell you about a while ago, he had raised 12. I said, my father and mother, I guess one look at me, I was the only child they ever had. <laughs> That's enough. Mm -hmm. uh, what did you do? On statehood day, when uh, oh, what did you do on statehood day when Oklahoma became a state? That was 1907. I remember it very well. I don't know if it was terrible. It didn't go where I went, but I, I guess Pawnee, I was six miles east of Pawnee, and I think that's where I went. Of course, there was no cars then. Nobody had a had. I guess it was cars some places, but not here. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, we had no buggy, of course, at that time. It was a jolt wagon and a horseback. So we were traveling. So did you go to Pawnee? I think we went to Pawnee. Did they have, what, a big dance, big celebration, or oh, what? Oh, yes. I think that's the celebration down there. <laughs> what, what do all the people do? Oh, I don't remember. They had the speakers, of course, all through the morning and probably afternoon. The age I was, I wasn't interested nothing on the ball games. Horse races, I followed that. They had they just got through making a race right down there. And, uh, but I, I guess we could get a lot of bets, they would show a lot of betting mm -hmm. on these horses, just coming all the horses. They didn't know, noted the horses, just like that, just people. Had a good horse that was served, uh, bred, I mean, for rubbing it. Would come in and they'd all throw him a, make a purse and run for it. Mm -hmm. That's the way it started, but the got to be, the law had to finally step in a few years, year or two after that, stop and just get a little too, too much of a good thing. So you had horse races there and ball games on statehood day? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you know Pawnee Bill? Oh, God, yes. What was he like? He, he was all right. He was a nice guy. I liked him. Of course, right when the Mount of Bud, he, he was by name, and that was about all, but uh, I saw a lot of him. Mm -hmm. You ever go to his ranch? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. It's a west of town, right? Yeah. Uh, they used to film some of the old western movies on his ranch. Huh? They used to film some of the old western movies on his ranch. Yeah. You ever go out there and watch them film? No. 
Mm-hmm. I never did. You but I know they did that because they hear them talk about it. Mm-hmm. Just some of the papers tell about what they've done and so on. But so long ago, I can't remember too much of it. I know that I never saw her now. Yeah. Um, just what kind of man was he? What kind of a man? Yeah. Funny Bill. Is he physically a man? Yeah. Well, he's a short man. He was tall, probably five, seven, something like that. And uh, pretty chunky, probably like 165 pounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, was he jovial all the time? Did he... Oh, I hear he was a jovial cuz. He always had something to laugh about. Ever see his Wild West show? Huh? Ever see his Wild West show? Yeah, I was a bunch of that after he organized that several years after that, you know. Went overseas with it. Around. Mm-hmm. You ever work with him on that? Huh? You ever work with his show? You ever work with him on his oh, Wild no. West show? No, I never worked with him. Yeah. But, but uh, you'll see it where they did. Never eat more than what they make it. I don't think the ones around while they like while they were working at it, but you go to the quarter to get a fish or something to give them to come to see them after that. I'm going to take that. Did you ever meet any of the people that he had working for him? Any huh? of, ever meet any of the famous people he had working for him? I don't know that I met any famous, but there's quite a few folks around probably me that know him as well as uh, just neighbors, eh? Ever meet, no, like, ever, ever meet Annie Oakley? Huh? Ever meet Annie Oakley? No, I never did. But I know she was there. I had to hear the name he was about. Mm-hmm. Um, see, I was six miles away, and, and uh, just didn't go for me too much. That there's something going on I wanted to go to. I had to work at home because my father wasn't able to do much. To regress again, huh? as a child in school, what kind of games did you play? Well, the uh, main thing was, uh, what is it you call it right there? It was because we were in place. We had two or three out in the center, and they said, two base here, and then people on this base would try to get to the other base, and these fellas, the first commands, the catch them with. Pat him once on the back, but that's too hard to do. Got so all to do is touch him below. And whenever they got them all, I would start over again. You know, I a silly game now. <laughs> but then I thought it was a good game. What else did and you then, play? Uh, uh, what else? Well, then I had a little ball game. I would get what's the of course, they choose up sides to play and play like the baseball. That is, my Lord, it wasn't exactly baseball, it was an easy match. I just, hard for me to get my barn on just how we done it. That way, I know about this much, it was a little different. If the batter, they have to have the umpire. And if the, if you run to the batter, the pitcher runs to the batter, this way it would be today over three strikes before four balls, he got his base, you know. Mm-hmm. He'd go out on this base and sometimes they'd have them putting it all on the base, you know. They'd do the apartments to get out there. And uh, then they wanted to get on the there's nobody to bat, you know. And mm-hmm. then that was that strange side. But so they, oh, they didn't play the baseball and the hardball. They were both all the home the kids and mothers made them hard yarn balls, you know. You could throw them and throw them, put them as good as a baseball. 
but he hits it in the way, so he hits it in the face and hurts it. And uh, when they run, Borden Deck, I believe is the name of this game. Borden Deck? Borden Deck. And when the fella hit the ball, you had to run the other base. When it's on the base. And this fella and so it's a bunch of ready to be a half a dozen of them. And the ball just hit was out, you know. It's very silly. It's terrible. But what we thought it was great. What kind of toys did you have to play with? Huh? What kind of toys did you play with? As toys. A, toys. Oh, toys. Well, didn't have much. Homemade ones. My dad just put a hand in make sure he would make me something. And what would he make you? Huh? What kind of toys did he make? I just can't remember. But I don't know, he made us uh, some toys that he did if we need them. There's a way to get Mr. Easy to make them. He <laughs> would do it if he's handy. But that's about all I can yeah, okay. remember about it. Um, ball game. What was your. Let me see, the Boxer Rebellion. Huh? Do you remember the Boxer Rebellion of 192 in China? Remember oh, hearing yeah, about I that? I remember speaking of it, yeah, yeah, but I know very little about it. Mm -hmm. What did you do during World War I? 1917, 1918? Well, I didn't leave John, I didn't leave home. I guess I took care of my father and my f Oh, that's my dad. That's bad, 1950. 1950. Call me. And I got a tombstone for the two. They both died in Pawnee, your parents? They both know. We well, was living east of Pawnee. No, we wasn't living there. We was living down on one of the farm we got. It, it was still farther on. About, so about nine miles from Pawnee. When my father died, and uh, there was nowhere to bury me. Every neighborhood had a little graveyard, but. Uh, my mother didn't want to bury him for his like I was singing the power of it. Well, we went up there and had uh, her brother-in-law, my uncle, but married. He married her sister. He took charge and he went up there and she went with him and looked at the window and picked out some lots. Three lots. And one for him, one for her, and one for me. So we all together. And he was... Took him up there and buried him there. She died 20 years later. She, of course, had to, she lived with me. So in 10, I got buried. And in 10 years, she lived as being my wife. She died. And uh, she was buried up there. And then I got a tombstone two, three years after that. Double tombstone for him. And... Uh, Did your mother do any work? Did your mother do any war work during the war? How was that? Did your mother, like, do any knitting during the war? Knit sweaters for the soldiers? Oh, no, not that I was. Did I your wife do any work for the war effort? I can't say she did. I can't remember what she yeah. did. Mm -hmm. So you were a farmer during World War One. Huh? You were a farmer during yeah. the war? 
Oh, yes. And how many kids did you have in that period? Uh -uh. How many kids did you have when the war broke out? Uh, I guess about, we raised five, five children. Mm -hmm. Two boys and God, I believe it's just four. I got tangled up now. I forgot that. I just two boys and two girls. I guess we just had four children. How long did you live there on the farm? On the farm? Oh, ever since. It was right. I just, I uh, had a wreck and my wife died from it. She lived 11 days. It was the first car we got. And, uh, there was nothing done about it. It was a car wreck? Car wreck. Where did it happen? Well, it happened, what year? Yeah. I guess in 20. Yes, we didn't try to let it happen. Did it happen near Pawnee? No, it happened on the road to Pawnee. I don't know, this... Can you say the name of the... railroad? But anyway, it went through this... filling station on the way. And, uh... I'll tell you how the thing was. It had a wide place. Sixty feet wide where the film station was. Out of room. But the pavement for the highway was over on the north side almost to the limit. Had left so much room back here on this side, you know, that a lot of people to drive it and park. Mm -hmm. So on. Well, on this day, we was going to Paul, and no, we was going to, going to get some apples at Steedy, little town east of Paul, and my wife had a cousin there, and had a big orchard, and told us to come up and get all the apples in the fall here she wanted to use. Mm -hmm. So, we was on the way up there, it's a noon, and, and uh, we got up there, and uh, Seen a car coming down the hill about a quarter of a mile, I guess, a little better away. So it's coming on the end side of the bed of the highway. Well, I said to my wife, I better wait. She said, oh, they may mess up, they may stop here. Go on, you go for the time to go. Well, I just didn't, didn't know why I had to watch it. The other head, they thought it was about 75 yards, rack them up over a hill from town to catch it by the way. I had the table town that had to go on, you didn't have time to turn, get into the real highway. Well, anyhow, I, we, this time we was going to the ski we was going straight all the cars. And I thought we'd made it. She left to us and she, hurry, hurry, hurry. Then one of the two women in the car and was driving, they wasn't intending to stop that station. So they slowed down. People said that they're making about 40 feet of bars. I don't know what they're making, but I know they come up on the thing. And, uh, of course, I tried to get over and they, Caught the back end of, the, of my car, whirled it around, sold me down the bottom. My wife was hanging to the door, and it swung open, and and uh, when they come back, two inch, two inch pipe at the sign stop was all, you know. Hit uh, very. Uh, Well, anyway, I heard, I 
rolling out and hit it and it was riding. Her body print was in that door breast in the door. She was holding that hammer on the door, you know. And when it come around and then when the car hit it, you know, it hit it. Why, well, that's when it made her up there. Well, I couldn't see her when I finally got up and got out of there. And uh, then she was up in the car. And I called her by name and she answered me. She said, you know, I thought, oh, yes, yeah, so she said it hurt so bad. And I pulled her out and took her on the palm in. I got a party to take her. I had to stay there by my old car. There's no old car, it was a new, about a year old. But uh, that was the end of it. I got up there, uh, this doctor, Dr. Haddock, known him ever since he was a little kid. He's much younger than me. And uh, I, uh, my wife had been up there about an hour ahead of me. I had to stay, did stay. I don't know that I had to, but I stayed. Take him out of the car and get it, see if it had run, and it hadn't hurt it like boogered up some. It hadn't hurt the run good. Run it back down to the depot. He told me, he says, I'm a son, and your, your wife's in bad shape. He goes, she can't never get well. Every rib in her chest is broke, and ain't even one inch of all. Just broke all two pieces. And, uh, he said, just as soon as blood poison sets up, she'll be gone. Well, I thought maybe she got better. But he was right. In about ten days she died. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That was an awful thing to be the thing I ever... When it's out of the way, I'd never see the car. Mm-hmm. Then she was, of course, she could have got hurt some other way, but I was 30 years old when I got married, and uh, two, three years before I had a car, and I was a little too old, some men at that age could pick it up, but I was just a... Uh, Never was a good hand of the car. I went on to the two years ago. I kept a car, but I didn't do much driving. That is only I never show, never tried to show off. Mm, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, I just drive along the road, but that's all. I, and then. How long did you say you lived there on the farm near Pawnee? Huh? How long did you live on the farm there by Pawnee? How many years? Near Pawnee? Yeah. Well, well, one day in 97, About 30 years. 30 years. years I, Did your uncles tell you any stories about the land run? Huh? Did your uncles tell you any stories about the land run when they got their claims? Land? In, in 89. Oh. No. No, I don't know what they did. Mm-hmm. Taking a bye bye of them. Uh, what did you do during the Depression in the 30s? What did you do? Oh, I, I was there. I was there always. Stayed at home and tried to make a living for me and my family. Were you still at Pawnee? Huh? Were you still at Pawnee in the thirties? Yeah, oh, around Pawnee. Yeah, I never did live in Pawnee no time. But uh, I went to a little town and my mind started up. Uh, it started up for we first went there. About two, three hundred. Uh, one time I got up and got it all the way out of them. When I, I think it's 1902 or something like that. I took a boom and got to be a thousand people there. Two years. Find out it wasn't much of a boom, just little shallow wells when they hit one. None of them make over 
uh, just enough to work. They didn't make 30 or 40 barrels a day. They wouldn't mess with them because uh, 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 everything was so cheap. Mm -hmm. Do you remember when you first came to Pawnee, what was your first impression of Pawnee? What was the city like? Well, to me, quite a city, but I never was around any, but when we stopped in Pawnee, I think I, well, I told that, I guess I did. Come and see the dad went over to the bank, and my mother's brother had told his bank about it, about dad coming, and he wanted to the, the locate him, and he was, he'd advise him, and he'd come and tell him what it was, if he'd come to his bank, there's two banks there, First National and Point, Arkansas Valley, that is the name of it, Arkansas Valley Bank. And, uh, talking about the size of the town, I was sitting out there and had my mother's run a wagon to hold a team. Me and they were both covered wagons. And uh, there was no sidewalks or nothing, just wood on two sides for a block. And then the rest of dirt for it. But 2,000 people, it's over. I asked him, man, I think he's a reliable fella. I got acquainted with him afterwards. I said, how large is this town? He said, well, they, they supposed to be, I don't know if they ever took an enumeration, but they're supposed to be about 2,000 people. Well, it's in that big today. In the morning, and I think, some fella told me the other day it was 2,800, but I know he might have got mixed up with 1,800 because it warmed down. A lot of business down there, but uh, the people didn't see too many of them on, just the people that live in the town. There's nothing there for them to do uh, except the fellas were the business. He, he lived there, of course, he lived in the business. Stores and things. Mm -hmm. But uh, just to go there to live and uh, work or something, there wasn't nothing to do. Were the streets paved? Huh? Were the streets paved? Oh, no, until the last few years. It is now, but then, no, no, there wasn't nothing, man, just a dirty outfit. <coughs> Was the courthouse built when you came there? Huh? Was the, had the courthouse been built when you came to Pawnee? Yeah, they did. They, 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 Outside of it, they, they built a you know, the working building on it. And, uh, but there's uh, better lot of them work on the inside down the sides. Mm -hmm. It's a stone outfit. How big is a courthouse? Well, I, I don't know. But it's a pretty good sized building, but it's in a number of feet. No, so I just don't know. Yeah. So, what did you do during the Depression? How did you make a living in the Dust Bowl? Oh, I just was just on the farm. He taught me to have a thing to eat him that we raise as we could. And, like potatoes, I always raise lots of potatoes, and cabbages, and beans, things like that. Picked them and put them away. We never went hungry. We always had plenty to eat, but we had no money to speak of. We made a few cash and get twenty five or thirty dollars for a cash was half grown. I just uh, tell me the fellow laugh the other day about he went through it the same time I did. We well, gonna take a horror kind of Cash the Tulsa got to be in later years. We get time of the size, they about six months old. Take them off the cows and take them very, very much. Guys, we get a time that weigh about 400 pounds. And uh, we get 
pieces, the order of peas, that is an awful part. That's so the lowest 20. No market for them, but mm -hmm. that's, that's. Did you remember the Depression of 1907? Oh, yes, yeah, I remember that. What was that uh, like? It was just money tough. Was it as bad as the Depression of the 30s? Huh? Was it as bad as the Depression of the 30s? I saw it worse, but maybe it wasn't. But they didn't. They, I had a little money that I worked for. Bail and pay for a fella. Fifty, sixty dollars and put it in the bank. And somebody told me to come out, you better tip that in your pocket. He said, uh, well, we put it out in the bank, you can't get it out. Oh, yes, they did it out. Well, they couldn't. But the other the government said, no, there's one week there that they wouldn't allow nobody to check out the money out. Was know. that in 1907? I think it was. Yeah. 1907. Yeah, I think it was, a, that was the first floor, wasn't it? Mm hmm Yeah. But uh, I, I talked to the burger about it. I said, uh, you put my butt in him, how he will let me take it out. I don't be that. Don't get excited about it. I said, you can get it out all right, but we have to keep it here. We got that artist we go, but we're going to hold it up till it's like you get it was only more than a couple of weeks. It wasn't. So it was. And then bought it all out. I only found out to find another note to get it out, but I was afraid I lost it. Like I started to tell you about that fellow, give me ten cents to tell him to pitch in half. And I worked all fall with him. And uh, then finally, finally, the first thing I know, he's gone. He's moved out. Nobody knows where it went, mm -hmm. and, but I collected about half of that was, and that was about twenty thirty dollars and by God, I thought that was an awful sight. He paid me a little long, but one of the members there, I don't know what he was, knows this fellow. He said, he's a good fellow, but he'll beat you out there if he can. He said, uh, I have it done, I'll tell you what you do, done them every time I see him, and especially before somebody, to get him talking to somebody. He wants to make friends with everybody, and, and uh, you, you done him. And uh, I said, well, I hate to do that. And he said, well, you do it. That's the only way you ever get your money. He'll be gone some of these times. He's done that in every community before, last year and the year before, which I didn't know. Well, I did that. And uh, so I got four or five more dollars out of it. And I think he owed, uh, when they left, he owed me twenty dollars. I never did see him anymore. And uh, mm -hmm. all the hate that's a tough. Did um, you come into contact with the Indians around Pawnee? Oh, I see, Indians, they were some of them pretty good guys, too. Of course, it ain't like a white man. What I mean, they ain't jolly, they ain't jolly, jolly, but they don't talk much, you know. And they have their Indian school there. I don't know. Maybe, I expect in a way they had as much education as the white boys did, but this is different type of outfit. Mm -hmm. Some of them, one of the main things was ball players. They get an engine on a ball team. They were all good ball players. That's how the mix of the whites. I played lots of games with Indians. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's see. What Indians were they? What what tribe? Pawnees. Pawnees? Okay. Pawnee Indians. How many Indians were there around the area? At that time? Yeah. Oh, I don't know, two, three hundred, I don't know just how many, but all the engines there was in that camp out there at the Pawnee Reservation, and uh, lived in Pawnee, there wasn't many lived in Tarabay, most of them lived in camps and things like that. 
what they later lived on, in. They, yeah. they, 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 now it's a pretty nice guy that put nice homes. Mm-hmm. What was the main industry of Pawnee at the huh? time? What was the main industry in Pawnee? Was it farmers or oil men or what? There wasn't nothing that I can think of. Mm-hmm. There was nothing, no, to work at the... What were you doing? Huh? What were you doing on December 7th when the Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor? <laughs> I don't know. Probably didn't know anything about it. They, they didn't take no daily paper. And uh, they took the Pony County paper, you know, I guess. And they told us about it, I guess, the next week. As we all know. Mm-hmm. Did you do any work for the war effort during World War II? Huh? Did you do any work for the war effort in World War no, II? No, I never did. Well, you, you still lived in Pawnee then? Well, I lived on the farm out there, yeah. Was this the same farm you had before? Huh? On the same farm? Oh, yes. The one my dad had. Still got it. Mm-hmm. We hold it 80 odd years, I guess. Mm-hmm. I homesteaded about, uh, I homesteaded uh, 80 acres north of this little town where I got half a mile. I had two uncles, my brother's brother, that used to come down here, and one of them wasn't quite of age, the youngest one wasn't, and they bought this uh, Dutchman out there's only he wanted to sell. They gave him two hundred and fifty dollars for his farm, I think. For his relinquishment and they go to Perry had to go to Perry point to Perry to file on it and him relinquish. And uh, so uh, the oldest one filed on it. Well, of course neither one was married. Well, you could go five years, you could prove up in three years if you wanted to, or you could go five years, most everybody, once a five years, he was able to, or, to, but on the town of the taxes, you didn't pay no taxes, you know, until you got a deed to it. Well, just before this oldest one, and lived there. He got married during that time. And the other one, the younger one, he farmed with me on our place. I'd take a third, he'd take a third, and my mother's third. And uh, he said, I'm worried. Land's all right. I think his wife's all right, but it's mighty easy if somebody gets her to know she'll have to sign that thing. I'm to get half of it. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he said, did you ever talk, I said, did you ever talk to Van, your brother, about it? He said, yeah, oh, yes, we talked about it. He said, well, she's all right. She won't go back on it. He said, you just don't know. You get fooled on people. He said, told Van, would you relinquish half of it and I'll go, and he'd go fire on it? And he said, yeah, if you want it that way. He doesn't live five years. Well, he went there and lived, uh, filed on it. And when he got married, before he proved up, I, I said, maybe by the time I proved up, I don't know, I built a little house up there, a little two-room house, and had the interest in the store down in the Vermeer, half a mile away. And that's why it, uh, his wife was this, uh, she's a city gal, she's come from the east, and said, oh, you live in town, and boy, she didn't like to sit out there by herself, mm-hmm. and him gone. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, mm-hmm. he put it me, uh, uh, I think he's ready to prove up, to buy it, he gave it to take $1,250 for it, and uh, me buy it. 
Well, I'd have to have a sale to get that bunch of money. So, so I didn't have any money to speak of, but we made the deal and uh, sold enough cattle and a team and part of the money I had raised at twelve hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. And then I bought it. And he was just like the other fellow. He was just ready to prove it. I was reading with the law. But I kept it. And I said, I, I, I proved it for about three years. And once paying taxes on it. You say you proved up on it? I proved up on it. So what, what is that? That's a go before the... Well... Uh, what it bounced to, I mean, they know, I don't know, I don't know what it was to, but you, you've you done the Lebanon, it's a government that bounced, asked you to do it, to make this your homestead. And then, uh, there's some little things to be paid for, uh, probably forty fifty dollars it bounced to. Okay. And uh, then the government gives you a deed. Okay. That's the way yeah. I've done to get it. Right. How many grandkids do you have? Grandkids? I will tell you. I think I've got over 40 in Ireland. Do you have anything that you would like to tell your grandkids? Huh? Would you? Do you have anything you want to tell your grandkids? Have I got anything? Yeah, anything to tell your grandkids? No, I guess not. The world of us is about to see me here the other day. I made a little misunderstanding among themselves. Uh -huh. I don't like to talk about it. Neither was about the place. They, I needed the 80. To, uh, try to thank to my, my oldest son died. What is your fondest memory? Huh? What? I just said you were telling me because okay. I don't know. Okay. Do you know any of the little of the songs you sang as a child? Huh? Any of the songs you sang as a child? Any little rhymes or tunes? Oh, yes. We had a little song. I remember one of those things of my grandson, so I did throw a metal verse. I don't know if I get it. Me and Grandpa went to town along with Captain Gordon, and there we saw the Yankee boys as thick as pie and pudding. Corn cobs twist your hair, cork wheels are after you. Fire the dragons tell you all that board the pistol found you. Still as I hate with my kids. Hmm. You have any more? Well, uh, right now I I can say you have several, but it takes two months. Mm. Oh, you get tired of waiting on me. Oh, I don't think so. I tell you what, I'm gonna go talk to another lady. Uh, I think I'm gonna go talk to a lady and I'll come back in an hour or so and maybe you'll think of some. All right. Okay. You get another lady you can yeah. talk and I yeah. say. Okay. Thanks. I she's a lot smarter now. I, I, I do.
This is Penn Woods interviewing for the Oklahoma Living Legends, and I'm visiting with Mr. Everett Easley. Now, if I'm correct, that's E V E R E T T Everett. If I have changed that by E V E R Y Every M Every Easley E A S L E Y Every Easley. Now, Mr. Easley is uh, nearly 101 years old, and he came to Oklahoma in 1897, so he has been here 83 years. Now, we're going to talk about your life mainly in Oklahoma. Yeah. We want to get a little bit before you came here, and I would like for you to tell me who your father and mother were, their names, and your mother's maiden name. Yeah. My father's name was Woodson Newton Easley. He was born in 54, two, in 1852. Passed away in December the 4th, 1901, here in this. I keep saying, but oh, we're going to stay Oklahoma. here in this house. In Oklahoma. But uh, he was, we never lived anywhere but in Pawnee County. Yes. We come on uh, the first days of March. We left Missouri, Bar Vernon County. I think it was eight miles north and four miles east of Nevada. In uh, February, somewhere towards the middle of February, 1897. And uh, it was such bad weather, and we had two covered wagons. I was driving one, and my father drove one ahead of me, and he was hauling the household goods that he, they brought, and uh, I had the farm machinery, two walking plows and two cultivators, and a hair and a corn planter. And... Uh, Two hogs that we'd butchered and cured for our meat and had that boxed up in there. And uh, so the first few days through, through Missouri, of course, we didn't have to go about two or three, about see, 12 miles from the bay, and 15, I believe, across over to Fort Scott. And was making about 10 miles a day because we had the double teams. The roads were so bad, it was snowing and raining, had been, and did, all of us. And uh, we'd found, we wouldn't make more than 10 miles a day. Of course, after we got out into Kansas pretty well, why, uh, it's a sandier country, and uh, the weather was some better, And but then at that, we was... Two weeks, I think, getting to Pawnee and eight miles, six miles, eight miles east of where Uncle I had lived. And uh, I think, I didn't know the now, I think it was 12 days that we were, but it wasn't over 200, 300 miles that whole trip. I don't think it's over 300. <laughs> I know Jim Dallas up there, fellas used to live with their boss, come after we did, and in a few years, and Bottle T's come around, and he had a little money, and he bought him one, and he wanted us to go back up there, and say, oh, me, I was, by that time, I was 18 years old, or 17 past, and I come here, and uh, he wanted me to go up there with him, and uh, to, where they had the celebration in the little town of Fairhaven, about 200 people, I guess. They celebrated the springs every year. The El Dorado Springs had the reputation of, of uh, being quite a health resort, and a lot of folks in the inland town, no railroad. And they, they come to Harwood, Missouri, and, and they... Uh, Fellas in buses, and there wasn't no buses then, mostly just in covered hacks. Take them down there to the springs, 20 miles. Well, Fairhaven was only two miles from Harwood, and the water was supposed to be just the same. 
identical as uh, El Dorado, but they built a hotel that I come and did, but couldn't, never did make a go of it, you know. It would be all two or three days, I say, to the summer, you know. It was cheap. Now, where was the hotel? I was at. Where was the hotel? This is in Fairhaven. Fairhaven. Fairhaven Springs. And first, the old man, Emma Conley, had uh, a section, I mean a quarter section, and a half section, half quarter section, 240 acres. And uh, on the east side of the highway is where the springs were on his farm. And that's where they tried to build the hotel, I mean, and tried to make a go of it. Little town, a couple of stores there, had blacksmith shop, and that is about no bank, and uh, a school there, just grade school, one room school. I went, that's what I got by education, at one room school. What was what the hotel like at that time? What what would the, why, how was it built and how big was this hotel? Oh, it had twenty four rooms in it. It's how I know that is uh, my grandfather was one of them. He put two thousand dollars in it, and uh, he thought he'd be a, a pan proposition, but uh, it was, didn't take. Elder Raider had to start and. Uh, so they finally give up on the. I don't know how long before they give it entirely, four or five years, but I was back up there in 28 to my family, and uh, we drove up there. And I went up for the picnic. 8th of August is when I always had the picnic, and just one day of it, and they draw a bunch of 5,000 people there, they say, for that thing. And, but Old soldiers then had lots of reunions, and uh, they always fought it. it. was a three-day reunion made about four days, and that's the reason, I guess, it drove such a, a crowd. But uh, I was going to tell you, in 28, when I went back up there, that old hotel was standing out there, somebody living in it, but it hadn't been painted or nothing. It, it, it was... They thought it was a wonderful building when they put up. I think it cost about $3,000 when they built it. How big were these rooms? How big were the rooms? Rooms? Yes, how big? Well, just, uh, I judge it about, some of them as much as, uh, they had one, probably 24 by 20, and the others were on down to, as low, I guess, as 12 by 14, something like that. Just large bedrooms is what they were. What uh, about baths? Did they have any bathrooms in the hotel? Oh, yes, they had a bathroom. And they had uh, the fish to bathe in this water from the spring. The hotel was built, oh, probably 50 yards of the spring. They, Kept it drilling around over a little three-acre park there that they laid out and had about three different different uh, springs. And uh, the natural spring is one that you'd run an a inch and a quarter pipe about half full. It'd run a lot of water. I had to run it off. It was either the only flowing. The others, the other two, I guess it was, it's a drill. My father and I might have drilled them, drilled them behind, you know, around a hundred and some feet down. And uh, I think, well, I believe one of them did flow. The other one, I think they had to put a pump on it. But there's practically the same water on all of it. And down, if, if you ever was down around in uh, El Dorado Springs, you know where it was, there's a lot of springs down there, but different names and the same size of water, I think, on all of them. Four or five different names, different locations had springs. Why uh, Why did you decide, or did your family decide to come to Oklahoma? Why did they come here? Well, why they come was because it, uh, we had no 
My father was a poor man, just a one horse farmer. And he, we came from Kentucky when I was a little fella. And in fact, I don't remember until we got here. About it, I was less than two years old. And, uh, so we first lived in Bates County, Missouri. That is north of Vernon. And, uh, really, uh, my grandfather's name, my mother's father, was named Hedges. And, uh, he was the leader. And he moved around a lot, and the others would pick up son in law and follow him. He had to do these son in laws that did that. And we first lived in Bates County. And then uh, decided after a couple of years to go down Barton County, around Lamar. I was just two counties down. And stayed there about 18 months. I think my father raised one, farmed one crop down there and had another in the end. But they didn't stay. They sold it out before it re- before it removed. Re- Anyway, before the time to gather the corn and moved back into Vernon County. It is a county between Bates and Barton. And there's where I started my first school in 85. Uh, September 85, I started a country school there. Tell him about you were com- why you didn't make the run of 89. You, your folks were going to make it, and why didn't you? Well, the first race, we was just a runner. Dad was just a one-horse farmer, and it just run what one man could handle. And uh, the first opening in Oklahoma here was in was, uh, 89. And the year 88, the fall of 88, he had a sale, and he, he kept his horses, and his, that sale mounted to two dollars under a thousand. <laughs> it was, it was always right smart them days. And anyhow, he decided he was going to make it. The race that come down from Oklahoma here, I mean, I think, come in at that time in 88. It was in that piece of land that was homesteaded in 88. But uh, the reason it didn't come was that putting everybody that bought anything, he didn't pay the cash. They give him a note, you know, that he paid that all. Oh. And so that knocked him out of the comments and had no money. Oh, and, uh, uh, well, so then after the rent was time was up, I mean, on the farm for that year, we moved into this little town of Fairhaven. And Dad was uh, kind of a carpenter's helper. He he was he was a good workman, but he never tried to take his lead and then the things and have the education and both in the carpenter work and also in the other way. But he was kind of tried. Now, when he had his sale, seemed as though where he grew up, they all learned a certain thing as to how to draw up notes and things like that and how it was proper, whether they could had any education or not, over six, eight grades, you know, they could do that. So he took his own sale, drew up the notes, and, and uh, took the, some folks, had some body to go their notes, and some give a mortgage, that is, I mean, put up some stock or something for whatever the bought, but of course there wasn't much of that. Because it, it was all small. Bills, anyway. He hired an auctioneer. There just, you uh, know, I don't know what he was. He was a mildly old fellow. I don't know if he was been an auctioneer or not. Of course, I don't. Yes, I much to do with that. The, so, uh, go ahead. So then uh, he couldn't go to the first. And he's related, and, and we didn't 
farm anymore. He was he bought five acres of land when he got his money back along the edge of this town. They laid off acre lots and he bought five of them. And we had a little house on it, and he moved on there and built a couple of rooms on that little. He wants to hear about your trip to Oklahoma and your first days in Oklahoma more than Missouri, Dad. So tell him. All right. Well, all right. right. Anyway, he uh, he decided not to make the race in '93 when Pawnee County and all those that had. My mother had three brothers that would come down to make the race, and they did, and they all got homesteads. But he decided not to go, and uh, he went back to Kentucky. He'd been gone 12 years, and he went back to see his mother. His father was dead. I said he left there, and so he didn't make the race then. And then when he come back, I, after that, why well, he he farmed till the '96, I guess, was the last year we farmed there. And then in middle of February, we took out for Oklahoma and landed in Pawnee and been there ever since. Why Pawnee? Uh, Pawnee is the county, county seat of Pawnee, and that's where these other men, uh, uh, relatives of me, my mother's brothers, had farms around there, you know, and located there, and raised families there. And uh, so that's the, the why that yes. becomes a Pawnee. And, of course, he didn't live. He had the had taken the TB. He was son of a built man like me. He's about six foot high, but he only weighed around 160 pounds. But the, it was in, he never had a brother, a large family. He never had a brother to die with the t- consumption, they call it then. But what all of his sisters did after they were grown. He had seven sisters. He had uh, six brothers and nine sisters. There were 16 in the family. And uh, all, I think nine of them were, all but one, I think, passed away with TB. Consumption, they called him, but none of the brothers. Two of his brothers were killed in the war. Which war? Civil War. And... Uh, one right immediately afterwards, uh, by accident, to him another man hunting 69 in Illinois. They were slipping up on some ducks up a dam, and another fellow was walking behind him, and his feet slipped out from under him, and he had the gun all cocked and held up in front. He was right and he shot him in the side. He only lived 10 days. And then one was killed later by a train. When he passed away, he said, well, he's the first easily in his family, as of the man folk. They would died a natural death. There was always some, there was uh, three of them died from shots, and uh, one from running over the train. There's four of them, and they just left him and two others, and he was the first one of the, but then, one of his brothers died about a year after he did, in 1902. Was um, there a great deal of T- TB, apparently, during that period? How's that? Was there a great deal of TB during they that were. period? There were. There were lots of it, yes. Did they isolate people in sanitariums at that time? I don't know. They know the country we did. They paid no attention to it. Then probably in the cities they might have, but I know uh, I know quite a few folks when I was a kid that uh, passed away with the TB and the uh, they stayed at home as long as they, uh, till they died. But that mother and family had to take care of But they they get down to where they couldn't travel around, walk, or anything. And so it wasn't, wasn't long until they were gone. The, uh, why don't you describe the farm 
your first farm in Pawnee County, what it was like, what your farmhouse looked like, and what the uh, farm was like. Well, when we first come there, we rented one of my uncles that made the raise and taken a farm. His, he passed away the, the typhoid fever the next buried at Pawnee. He was buried in the engine uh, graveyard. At first, there wasn't no white man. And later on, his family had him uh, taken up and dressed the head of uh, a white man's graveyard, moved him to it. And he just had one child, and uh, so he was drowned. He went through World War One. his son did. And when he come back, I went to, up to have a big time on one day on the Arkansas River, and he'd been shell shocked, and they didn't know it. Nobody knowed it but his mother. He told her about it. He was been shell shell shocked. Dad, he wants to know about the farm when you first got it, and and all oh, how your dad got it. The home. Uh -huh. How did your father get well, the home? Yeah. Well, he just bought another bag that filed on it, and uh, bought it from him. I mean, and uh, what kind of a house was on it? Well, when we got it, there wasn't much of a house. A little, two little boarded up house, but they were building a stone house. And uh, that's what's on the farm today. They finished it up after he bought it, and, and we did it. It's a four-room stone house, all just divided into, I think it was, we'll try to give you the dimension of the house. I think it was 48 by 20. Uh, Forty-eight by twenty-six, I guess. And the way there were four rooms, and of course two that was made it was just a stone wall around it when we got it. There wasn't a, just a rough, and all in one room. And the first winter was pretty tough on us. We had quite a time keeping warm, and that was in poor health then. So we had it built in the uh, neighbor there was a carpenter, and my father had worked at the carpenter. He was able to work some yet. And they put a frame inside the rocks. The rocks were uneven inside. They set two befores and uh, lathed and plastered it. And made four rooms and two fair size rooms. I think they were 14 by, one of them 14 by 17, the largest room. And, and, uh, and the next one wasn't that large. And then two small bedrooms. The other way was fenced off into four rooms. And this other way of the day. Of course, later on, after I lived there, I think in 27, 28, I had a family, and so uh, I built an up. First was a, what they call a hip roof house. The, uh, different direction, all the slope of it was, and uh, we tore that all off, and Built her rooms above, and uh, turned the roof the other way and put a porch on one end, and it's and that's the way it is today. It's still there, sir. The house is still there then. Yeah. Is it? Uh, how big is the house now? Has it been enlarged considerably? Oh, well, the frame is no bigger than it was. But I only just put up three rooms above. Isn't it well, Mother? 
I think there's three rooms upstairs. Four bedrooms. Four bedrooms. I think it's six or seven rooms in it now. But uh, it's, it's been a good while ago. I, I forgot a lot. Uh-huh. Tell him about your grandpa and uh, about Grandpa and Grandma Hedges living for their 76th wedding anniversary. Yeah, they uh, come here a year and a half. That's one reason we come. They come down, followed their boys down there, and he bought out a uh, trailer to farm in Kansas for a farm over there uh, north of us. It's miles south of the Valley Post Office, where it was. And they lived there quite a while, and finally when after Merrimack started about... I think in 19, and it started in 1901, but uh, I, I think it was 1907 when they moved over to Merrimack, and then he had a son, had a place north of the town, and he bought, I bought one 80, and uh, he bought the other 80, and uh, this son of his went to Montana, and uh, he moved out on the farm, and, and they lived out there till he passed away. He was 95 years and one month old when he died, and uh, the brother, then she went down with a chattered daughter in Tulsa. She went down and lived with her two more years, and she passed away down there. But she was brought back her both buried in Pawnee. They was married now to six, uh, 76 years. And the, the tombstone had a, had a son that done pretty good. And he, he uh, ordered this tombstone. And, that's what they had. It's a very large one. And they are in the Pony Cemetery. Why don't you talk about uh, farming and what, uh, what tools you had at that time and what some of the problems were in farming in Pony? Well... I remember, <clears throat> I don't guess you ever saw one, but one of these cultivators brought in was a, called a tongueless cultivator, if you ever saw one. I know tongue. Every time a team would stop, it would lay down. We were just, there wasn't nothing to hold it up. But when it, no tongue in it, didn't know nothing. And when the team start to pull it, it raise right up and go ahead. And uh, the funny part was that we had a neighbor named Thomas that uh, he'd been, he was a Kentucky, he would farm something as a boy, but he'd work at other things, and he'd uh, never farm too much. And so he, he was there when we joining us, and the father bought this fellow out. And... Uh, so he come over. He didn't have any implements. He wanted to put out a corn crop. And he come over and I don't know if he could buy a cultivator. He cultivated, didn't have to cultivate much of no weeds and no nothing. Just stir the ground occasionally. Hadn't been plowed out long enough to be in a weed to get started. So uh, he... B- Come over and the uh, dad, I think, took it over to him, took it, cultivator over to him, and hooked it up and plowed around too, showed him just how it worked. It all wooden held and, and wooden beams, you know, everything was wooden about the thing except the wheels. And uh, there was, simply was nothing to it. There was a horse pulled from each wheel, a single tree in front, and uh, whenever he stopped, Thing and just lay down the wheel lay down on the side and the lay over it. And uh, so he got that cultivator and Dad didn't stay with him very long. He thought he'd go down to Hamlet. 
a little while he come over and said, I guess I broke your cultivator. I don't see how he could do it, Dad said. He says, well, it's down. He can't get it up. And he says, well, it always lays down when you stop. He says, if you spoke your horse and started off, it would get right up again. Well, I just thought there's something I'd done to it, they said, and I just unhooked on the laid down <laughs> each way. But he learned better after that. He's a fine old man. He wasn't old then, but he raised a family there, and I guess it was just one of those boys that he was there yet. But they all got to be wealthy in the oil. And... Uh, We wasn't lucky, and I was lucky. We had about five wells drilled on that farm, but it never mattered very much. It looked like it was going to a few days and pray out and go to water. So we never did. But we got quite a lot of rental out of it from companies trying to work enough to them a way to help us make a living. We wasn't lucky, and I was lucky. We had about five wells drilled on that farm, but it never mattered very much. It looked like it was going to take a few days to pray out and go to water. So we never did. But we got quite a lot of rental out of it from companies trying to work enough to them way to help us make a living. Did uh, uh, did you know Garden Lily, Pawnee Bill? Who? Uh, Gordon Lily, Pawnee Bill. Oh, yes, I saw him a lot of times. Of course, I wasn't particularly acquainted with him, but I was, he's a Pawnee there, you know. I saw him quite a lot, and he had a show a long time. And I've been to his Wild West show that he had. That Buffalo Bill was in with him quite a while. And he getting a little old and he quit it. Buffalo Bill, you know, was an early day showman. And Pawnee Bill was too. But he... Pawnee Bill's, uh, I do guess he, I can't remember if they ever had any children had his wife. I saw she's. Beautiful woman and quite a horsewoman. And, uh, but of course they've both been dead quite a good many years now. Nearly 40 years, I guess. You didn't I, know them well, though. Oh, no, I didn't there. know them well. Did you know, uh, Orlando Walkling? Now, he made Orlando Walkling. No. He, he, he actually settled in Perry, but he made How's that? Orlando Walkling. What made, was he, an attorney or something? No, no, he made the run. He was high oh. Cherokee, but he made the run in 1893. Uh-huh. And uh, he was uh, he was 100 and, 105 or 6 when he died. How was that? He, he lived to be 105 or 106. Uh, but he, 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 he moved to California in his later years. Trying to think of some of the people who um, who made the uh, Cherokee Strip that you may have known. Of course, uh, probably the, the oldest. The oldest. Oh, I'm sure he was. Uh, I'm sure he became that. Yes. Um, uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's true. Uh huh. About uh, stories, uh, what are some of the things you remember, some of the funny things that happened when you were uh, uh, in Pawnee, things that were most interesting to you? Do you think of anything that happened that was funny, unusual? No, I, I can't say that I do. Uh-huh. What, uh, 
what was the, uh, in Pawnee, what was some of the most interesting things that happened in Pawnee while you were living there? Well, I, I don't know. The, uh, of course, the Indians, some of them are pretty smart folk. Some of them got educated early and uh, even attended college and so on. But as a rule, they, uh, they're not much to mix with. They did aloof from the white folks. The ordinary and the everyday engine, the, the one that wasn't educated, he was a little leery of the white folks. But they eventually got rid of that. Now, they, there's no difference in them and the white folks. No, I can't say that I can think of anything particular that happened probably would be did you live closer to Pawnee or Merrimack huh did you live closer to Pawnee? oh I lived a mile and a half two miles two miles I guess of Merrimack and 15 to Pawnee what do you remember about Merrimack well I remember there wasn't nothing there it was just a press well it had the uh, yeah, well, it was in his pasture later when we went there, and uh, I've shot jackrabbits and chased, I uh, kept a couple of hounds. I drove the run cows across his place a lot of times, and uh, that's about all I remember. I think in 1901, they began to survey for a railroad through there, two different corners, the Fresco and, and the, uh, oh, what was the name of that? The one that eventually, the one that eventually built a railroad through there, was the first built a through Pawnee in 1901. And uh, then from Skeedy is stationed north of Pawnee, or oh, in the east, northeast of Pawnee. They run another line down, uh, what they call a freight line, down through where Merrimack is, down through Yale, and on down, I forget where it intersects with the other line, I believe Guthrie, maybe before it got to Guthrie. And I've been over it several times, but I forget just where it did go into I believe that was Guthrie. And uh, at first it was just a prairie there, but uh, they it was quite a while that being a freight line, the builder was quite a little late there at Merrimack. It was eighty acres of water, and that seemed like it. We thought it was a big thing then. A couple of years then. They built them just horses. It was didn't have no. I don't remember if ever used them as a machine, the uh, electricity, or uh, naturally to run a machine. They, they done it all with horses, and that's what took so long. It's about a, over a year building this. Dam that hold this lake there at Merrimack. Then they had to cut a hill. I think in one place it's 27 foot through. The railroad is 27 foot deep, I mean. So you cut through a hill there north of Merrimack. I had been working there a year so. It was about 1904 before they got through. Between maybe up to five. I think 1904 when they finished up. Of course, they was running trains a little while before that, about 1903, they began to run freight trains through there. The, um, why don't you, uh, how big were some of the freight trains? How many cars would, uh, could, could those things, how many cars could those early trains pull? Oh, they uh, 
I, I, I average would be 30, 35, I guess. And uh, so sometimes it put two engines on if they had. I have count, but they were empty. I've counted the train once there that had 100 cars on it, but they were taking them back somewhere, you know, empty going back, but they had two engines on that. And, uh, but I think 30 or 35 cars or some of them not that large or about as big as one that were loaded as I ever noticed them pulling. The, uh, what about the Spanish-American War when it took place? You were, you had just come to Pawnee. Did any of your people there go to the Spanish-American War? No, I was old enough to go, but I was not a war man. I didn't. Uh -huh. Some of the neighbor boys wasn't as old as I was. Got in before they were 18 years old and went. I sort of joined with, uh, of course, that mountain nothing. And six months the last, they were back, you know. There was no... Some of them became part of the cavalry that, uh, of, uh... Some of them became part of the cavalry that went on San Juan Hill, some of the uh, Oklahoma. Uh, what about uh, the uh, what about the building of the town? How big was Merrimack when you first? Oh, it never was. At one time, it was a thousand people there. Uh, smaller than that now. But uh, it didn't. It wasn't in the years. That is one of. Hit all while uh, east of Merrimack there, and that's 1904, I think, that's when they hit that. And, uh, of course, it created a lot of excitement, and a lot of people come in there, and uh, I think the population, they said, got up to a thousand, but as a rule, about 250 to 300 was the size of the little town. The people there. Did they ever have any kind of factory or industry in Merrimack? And then the what? Factory or any? Oh industry? no, no, Just the, uh, no, not anything of the kind. Not in Merrimack. Do you remember any people in Merrimack who stand out or who may have gone on to uh, maybe bigger things elsewhere, become uh, well known or anything? No, I can't say that, do. Well, I think that, uh, what about Rex Privet? Oh, Rex Privet's from Merrimack, isn't he? No, uh, I expect the larger, uh, most, uh, well-known people were the Privets, probably, that, that, uh, originated there, raised a family there, and, uh, Rex Privet was, uh, he's one of his state officers. What was it he? Well, he was corporation commissioner, but earlier than, later on he was, yeah. But earlier than that, he was the, uh, he was the, uh, speaker of the, ha no, he was speaker of the house. Is which? Speaker of the house of representatives. Oh, yes, I knew he had some, I remember yeah. him ever since, in fact, I know his parents before they were married. And he was, uh, I think it was two sons older than him. But uh, he's the only one, I think, that took politics. And he was... I, I think my youngest son and him were about the same. He wasn't quite as old as my boy Max was. And he used to come to our out there and play with him a lot when he was a kid. And they went to... Uh, local school together, and of course he went on to college, Rex did, and uh, then got into politics and got to be a election speaker of the House, wasn't it? Yes. Uh -huh. He is yeah. now with First National Bank here. How's that? He is now with First National Bank in Oklahoma City. Rex Privet is now in Oklahoma City with First National Bank. I thought he was on Norman. Oh, he's Oklahoma City. Well, and I've been missing for him. Someone said that he, after he quit politics, he went to Norman. So I guess that's a mistake. 
He may have uh, briefly. He may live there now, but he is with Parker. Well, that is several years ago. He's been out, what, two, three years, ain't it? Yeah. Uh, was, uh, well, I like him. He's a nice, he's a dad, he's a nice, nice guy, intelligent guy, but he's just a common old working boy, but, uh, and I, of course, I knew his, uh, father, his mother's people, I mean, in Missouri, up in Vernon County, they camp us around the beta there, and, uh, so when they moved down here, and the, then the, she, one of them, I think the second girl, married Arnold Privet. And uh, he got into the oil business. When the first welders drill there, he... Somebody backed him, and he he got into it. I just don't remember what he did, but uh, they had a company there for a while. Him and a fellow named Martin, and another name of uh, three of them. I can't remember the other fellow's name. How about Rex's grandfather? Huh? What about Rex's grandfather? His grandfather? Yeah, Rex's grandfather. You know him, Mr. Hauser? Oh, yes. His neighbor for years and years. Tell about him. Not his grandfather, his, uh, well, what was it? Yeah, it would be his grandfather, sure. I hadn't thought of that. He was a, just a good, ordinary citizen. As far as I know, he was a good... I know he was a good man, but he was no wealthy man and no money maker, nothing. He's just a farmer. And uh, now you served on the school board, didn't you? How's that? You served on the school board. Yeah, twenty odd years, too long. And is that <laughs> what what school system? Merrimack. How's that? Merrimack school system. Yeah, Merrimack school, just a little country. School was never, well, we finally built a high school. I was, I was, I think I was on eight years after the, had a high school. I think we built, we got that in 1920. Built the $40,000 bonds and, uh, Really, while the excitement was on that one time, I was on the board then. We leased this school land, as, I believe three acres of it, for, he forgot now exactly, but it was 15 or 16 thousand dollars an acre. Thousand? Thousand. It runs about another forty thousand dollars, and the forty thousand was voted. We built this school with, and when we got through furnishing all, we owed about still owed four thousand dollars, and that was paid off before I left the board. You get on, and you can't get off. That's the trouble with that. I, my kids are uh, what's Growing up and uh, went through the high school, I had four children, and uh, gone, and uh, they just, every time I had to, the thing is going to get off, why somebody say, well, he had pretty good luck, let's put him back again. Well, I spent a lot of time and lost a lot of time with this school, but of course I don't regret it now. They were eventually, though, later, some 25, 20 years ago, it, Pawnee took up all these little towns now, it's all there in Pawnee now, you know, under Pawnee jurisdiction. Tore a schoolhouse down that was built there. I was telling you about it, some 
40, I say, it's all total about something over $50,000. And then you do a lot of building them days when things were cheap. That much is it. It is all tore down and moved on here. Nothing there yet. Now, what were some of the biggest problems of a school board? What were your, uh, what were some of the, uh, problems that you dealt with other than the purchase of land and schools? Well, I, I just, I just couldn't say. I, Were you ever, did they ever try to rope you all into any of the, oh, say a parent was mad at a teacher or the school? Oh, no, we never had no trouble that the way. Yeah, oh, oh, pretty good. They always a bother, but whatever the board decided on, and we never had no trouble. I can remember while I was on there, I think it was, I was trying to see, I maybe can tell exactly how long I was on there. Well, that's not too important. What years about were you on? What? Uh, well, that's what I was trying to say. Uh -huh. I mean, what about when did you go on? I was, my oldest child was born in in uh, Well, Elan, do you remember when Bill was born? Eleven, nineteen eleven. And then Elaine followed him and I say, think she was born in twelve. Not Elaine and Wilma, the one lived in Tulsa. And when the, I remember I went on the board when Wilma was seven years old. And uh the uh, Horn Bell was the only two years old I ever go to school. I had the four younger, this Elaine here, and Max, the youngest. Uh, that is uh, seven and. Uh, oh, tell me about the first automobile you ever saw. The first one I ever saw was in this. Down here, 1904. What did it look like? Tell us tell about it. People were gathered up and heard a noise on the street. I was on the street. Down there looking around as a young fella then. And it was 1904. Of course, I was 24 years old. And I wondered what that noise was. It was seen about... Twenty people standing all bunched on the street. Well, they'd come around the corner and come up and it was an automobile, you know. I don't remember. I was told at the time of what it make and what company had it. I don't know what it was for or what. But it was sure making a lot of noise. And uh, I sound like a slice machine. And uh, that was the first one I ever saw. And I thought, my well, Lord... I wouldn't want one of them to say anything. I expect to be high priced then. That's the first one I ever saw, 1904. Yeah. I think about 1910 is when uh, Ford got in with its cheap outfits, Model T's, wasn't it? And you know, everybody, they could have had three, four hundred dollars to buy them. I think they sold it. Got the seven. The person I gave bought a four hundred and fifty dollars. I was eighteen for it, but I bought one. And uh, they was a poor man's car. So it was all crankers then at first for a long time. And it wasn't. Then they kept improving them. They got where they could like to start them like they do today, but have a motor to. Start the car. Did you ever break or, or hurt an arm by having a crank kick back on you? How was that? Did you ever break or hurt an arm by having uh, a... Uh, no, but I noticed I was, I was dead. No, I was dead. I, that's what I'd done. If it was a little hard to start, 
Jack got behind the wheel, you know, as I say, and then I, I, I wouldn't try to spin it. Just pull. If it kicked back, it jerk out of my hands, you know. Of course, that's generally where people got hurt was that jerking, kicking backwards, you know. But I remember I had a neighbor, but he was lucky. He was a strong man. He's a man about your size. And uh, he said, well, shoot, I can hold one of them things. He had one. And he just, you know, <laughs> just trying to tell she'd go, you know, if it didn't it sometimes would kick, jerk loose, huh? And, uh, I was pulling up a quarter. I know it mine was a kicking I was, so I fired, backfired what I was doing. And, uh, he came up and he said, uh, let me have it. And I said, well, don't you spin it. I don't want to see you get your arm broke. Shoot, I can hold that thing, he said. And I, of course he couldn't have done it, but he thought he could. But boy, he spun it till just started anyhow. And he... um, what other? Uh, what was the first uh, uh, time you saw Oklahoma City? What? Uh, what year? About when was that? How was that? When did you first see Oklahoma City? Well, that was 1904, I think. Here you saw that car. Yeah, I saw the car, yes. Uh -huh. What uh, did it look like? Talk about what Oklahoma City looked like in 1904. Oh, Oklahoma City, by that time, had reached 30,000. Hey, I asked the, I say, well, I saw it was quite a city. It was close to me, of course. I remember saw a city. I said, oh, it's 30,000. I went on down to Fort Worth. Another problem. It was 40,000 at that time. I went on over to Dallas. It was 70,000. Boy, I was getting in the big, I was getting in the big towns, you know. But Oklahoma said in 1904, it claimed 30,000. What did it look like downtown then? Well, it, uh, I thought it was good looking town. Did you ever go to Delmar Garden? Sir? Did you ever go to Delmar Garden in Oklahoma City? No, no. I don't know whether they had one then or not. It was, it was in operation then, uh, the amusement park. Um, of course, they didn't have much industry in Oklahoma City then. No, let's see, the, the, it was up in 89, uh, 89, yeah. I just wanted to know that part of the state was opened up in 89, 90, 10, is the word employed. That would be when I'm speaking about about 15 years after the opening. Yeah. Is he got any really grew fast? No, but yet I've read since then that Oklahoma City, uh, first night of after the opening, would have had 10,000 people, you know. The country had 10,000. But it had been open, it had been in the territory, you know, it had been the capital of the territory. And it had 10,000, it said Oklahoma City matched him the first night. First a lot day. of people didn't stay. A lot of people didn't stay. They'd come and then they'd stay a year or less and go back. Yeah. Oh, yes. It's easier, it's easier to come than to stay sometimes. Yeah. Uh, do you think of anything else, Jim? Is there anything you want to uh, any, any stories or reminiscences? Well, I've heard many, many stories over the last few hours. But... What was your worst Christmas? Your worst Christmas. My worst Your worst Christmas. I wouldn't know. Your daughter thinks you have one. How about the cup of brown sugar? The brown sugar. Say, I understand. Well, uh, the brown sugar. 
Sugar was more used than it is today, all right. Because I guess it's a little cheaper than the granulated. And, uh, Don't you remember the stories you told about how you waited for Christmas morning and the snow was so deep and you got oh, up? Oh, that's when I was a little kid. Oh, yes. Huh? Yes. That was yeah, I was back in Missouri. Day. Yeah, oh, yes. And what did you have? Oh, I had a tin cup of brown sugar. That's all. They, they couldn't go to town. Nothing snowed by now, you know. I was about five, six years old, I guess. I can remember it very well. I was expecting something. When I got up, I, that's what I got. You think Santa Claus thought you'd been bad? Sir? You think Santa Claus thought you had been bad? What about the jury, the Kenner jury case in Tulsa? Oh, the Kenner jury case. Well, I think I was on that. Eleven days. And, uh, of course, we decided, found the party guilty, but left it to the judge to give him a sentence. And uh, how we come to do that, there's three on the jury that well, they wouldn't say he wasn't guilty. Of course, he didn't tell him that he wasn't guilty. He shot him, all right. But, you know, they said, oh, I'll tell you, they, they, they'd been through, see, war, what, war, war one? I just didn't know what, about 11 or 12, wasn't it? I guess that was the war they'd been in, and they said that they didn't want to find him guilty because the fellow gets in these places and they, he, he can't help himself. And he probably, other fellows, of course, the evidence didn't show they did, he just shot him. But they held up for him, and they finally said, we don't even think that judge thinks he's guilty. Well, we decided that uh, if they'd sign up, we'd leave it to the judge. And that's what we did. The judge gave him 25 years. He what? told him when he sentenced him, I, I, I went And, uh, of course, we decided, found the party guilty, but left it to the judge to give him a sentence. And uh, how we come to do that, there's three on the jury that, well, they wouldn't say he wasn't guilty. Of course, he didn't time him. He wasn't guilty. He shot him, all right. But, you know, they said, oh, I'll tell you, they, they, they'd been through, see, war, what, war, war one? I just didn't know what, about 11 or 12, wasn't it? Yes. I guess that was the war they'd been in, and they said that, they, did, they didn't want to find him guilty because the fellow gets in these places and they, he, he can't help himself. He probably, 
other fellows, of course, the evidence didn't show the dead. They just shot him. But they held up for him, and the finally said, we don't even think the judge thinks he's guilty. Well, we decided that uh, if they'd sign up, we'd leave it to the judge. And that's what we did. The judge gave him 25 years. He what? told him when he sent him, I, I went back up there the day he sent him. He waited a few days before he sent him and turned us loose, let us go home. And then we went back the day he sent him. He says, I intended to give him 50 years as if left to me. But I saw that at the age he was, and so all he was only he's still in his twenties, and uh, maybe all of the body cut it down to twenty-five, and that's what he gave him. Well, they was disappointed. They thought the judge would turn him loose, you know. Well, this has been an interview in uh, November of 1980 with Mr. Every Easley in Oklahoma City. Uh, 101 years old and a, uh, a resident of Oklahoma, particularly Pawnee County, since 1897. I was signing it off. And we certainly enjoyed visiting with you, Mr. Easley. Yeah.